then I will So this is great that we are able to record this for people that can and cannot participate. We're probably missing people because of our little glitch that we had coming in. It's possible. So, so welcome everybody to my first virtual uh, Meet the Artist with American Landscape exhibit being held at Gallery 333 at Unitarian Universalist, Universalist Church of Annapolis. It's a mouthful. So I have Deb Boudra with me who, with her grace and kindness, she has a, is the one that has gotten me into doing solo exhibits. My very first one was at Gallery 333 so, several years ago. And it's pretty exciting to try to do this virtually now in this uh, difficult, challenging times that we have. Yes, I'm remembering going back to when we were in the bird club together and I saw every submission of your photography getting better and better and i started working on you a lot of years ago emily yes you did so you've got to have a show but i never asked you when and how you decided to become a photographer well actually i was a photographer when i was a teenager because my father was an anthropologist and he happened to have a pentax k100 camera or it might have been k1000 and we were in the Andes Mountains and I would keep stealing it away from him and trying to take landscape photography. And that is really where I started doing photography was way back when I was a teenager in Bolivia. So um, it has always been with me ever since then. Uh, I took some classes in college and then always had some sort of little camera with me because I got into travel quite a bit. So I did a lot of travel photography in my 20s and 30s. And even in the 40s, I was still having those little point and shoots that everybody had. And eventually the digital, uh, it went from film days to the digital era. And I didn't really quite catch up on that until one day I was sitting there with my cell phone, my camera and my little music player and I went, oh, I get it. I understand what all this digital age is. You put it all in one and makes it so much easier. So, um, so my first digital camera was in 2011. And that's, that's when I started, I had no idea what I was doing. Basically you're having a little computer in your hands. And so you have no idea what to do with this machine. And so I was very fortunate. My neighbor actually bought the same camera body at the same time. So we sat down and read the manual page by page, looking at every little setting for the cameras. And so what happened was you first get stuck with just figuring out how to do the camera. And then you go on little workshops and people walk you around, try to help you learn about how to use said camera. And then you realize that's only one piece of the whole element of being a photographer and then eventually becoming a digital artist because once you take the picture, you've only just started. It's what you do with the image later on, which can transform it into something completely different. So you might have a certain emotional feeling with the scene that you're capturing, but you don't actually make it come into fruition until you work with it in post-processing and software later on. So um, it's just been a, a work, in, it's been a progression. I've had several different people influencing me um, with this specific exhibit, American Landscapes, um, that has really made this a more of a co cohesive body of work. Well, tell us about American Landscapes. This is a new one. So this is a new one because I'm a pretty versatile photographer. I am pretty much a landscape and nature, nature and wildlife photographer. So you won't see me doing street photography, although I know I've, I have done that. And I do really enjoy abstract photography. But American Landscapes is a series of digital imagery that I have created, a lot of it amazingly so, with my smartphone, with my iPhone. And hmm. these works are reminiscent of a time past. Um, when I go and see certain scenes, whether it's the light or the environment that's happening, 
I'm always looking for habitats in nature that as if time had forgotten it. And the Hudson River Art School has that sense of romanticism in their imagery. So they were a mid 19th century American art movement where they went and celebrated the natural beauty of the American landscape. And they were the first school that really emphasized American artistry that broke away from the European more realism style of art artistry. So there is a sense of romanticism, a little sense of ethereal feeling in this body of work in this American landscape um, series. I think that um, that Hudson River School might need a little more to a few folks if they picture these enormous Go West Young Man paintings by Thomas Cole and Albert Bierstadt. Um, and, and then slam, it's, it's exactly what you're doing with this. That's exactly right. And you can go to the National um, Gallery of Art in Washington, DC, and you can see some of these pieces of work. And Deb is right, they're, they're absolutely huge pieces of work. And always a very strong element in what they've done is they always have a strong element of light in them. And they tend to have a little bit of a human element in their work. And I tend to shy away from having a human element Although I do have a series of barns that have the same romanticism style of, of artistry with, with the photograph. Well, how about if you describe the main steps of your personal artistic process? So for instance, this one, this one image right here on the top, this is actually Rock Creek Park right in Washington, DC. You never would have thought it looked so rustic and so much from something that might've happened a hundred years ago, but that's right there in their nation's capital. And I saw the image, I saw the light was nice. I liked the spot of light that was coming in with the stream further back. And using my iPhone, it was the 11 Pro with this one, I went into the panoramic view and actually did a panoramic image with this picture. I knew when I was creating it in field that what I was going to do was use certain software um, apps that I have on my iPhone. One is called Mextures and another one is called Distressed FX. And both of those um, give a bit of vintage look, whether it's grunge or grit or um, textures, you can change the skies a little bit. Um, and then also some of them, the the, the excuse me, the distressed effects actually adds fake birds. So I love to sometimes add some little additional birds that perhaps I thought were there, but really weren't. That's fascinating. What part of it do you enjoy the most? You know, just being able to escape reality, honestly, <laughs> and go out into nature in these random places where I really try to avoid people. So just being out there and there's nothing more grounding and helping your spirit and your soul than getting back to nature. And sometimes you may just have a half an hour or an hour in your day that you can do this. And there's plenty of natural areas where we live in this area that you can just pop out and just disappear for half an hour, an hour. And it really rejuvenates you and it centers you back to, to yourself so that you feel more at peace with um, all the stresses of everyday life. And especially this year with COVID. That is really important. Yeah. Is there a message or a passionate cause that drives you with your- You know, I think the most important thing is that we don't forget how important these natural areas are for us, for wildlife, for habitats, for the planet. You know, it's so critical that we protect these envi environments. And when I do go to these parks, it's tragic for me to see how much trash and graffiti is now being littered amongst these waterways that are essential for life, for both plant life and animal life and, and bird life. It's really essential for that. So my, my hope is to be able to capture these natural areas in a way that reminds of how it used to be so that we remember that it's so important for us to protect these for future generations. It's really critical that we do that. And it kind of gets lost. So I, 
every once in a while, I want to capture the trash so that people realize what's actually happening. Um, but then also I kind of lose what my message has been, which is treasure the natural beauty that we have around us. That's great. How about sharing some of these images now? I'm anxious to see them and okay. hear what you have to say about so, them. So we picked a few. Um, so what I'm learning, you know, thanks to um, one of my mentors that I have been following that does this type of artistry is that each time that you go throughout the time of year, it is different, even though it is the same place. So, but each little scene is different just one space to the next. So I'm starting to try to create a vertical series of at least two to three images in the same location that meld together. So instead of creating one panoramic, panoramic image, then I try to do it in pieces. So um, another thing I'm trying to pay attention to much more is how I structure my composition within these these, um, this, these images. So as you can tell, I have lots of great logs that lead you all the way through the composition in this thing. So this is actually the marsh at North Point State Park. If you go, you have to wear mud boots because there is mud and water up to your knees at some places. If you go in the summer, there's lots of mosquitoes and lots of snakes. So <laughs> you have to kind of be prepared. So when you go into these natural environments, it's not as easy as you think because you actually have to battle the elements in order to, to be there and to be able to capture the moment. Emily, the adventurer. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I went in the springtime and, you know, it's just kind of neat because when things start warming up, you can hear the frogs start to, to peep, they call them peepers. And, you know, you really, it's almost like you can hear the earth breathing back to life. It's, it's pretty exciting. Springtime, early spring is a pretty exciting time for me. Yeah, and those heavy clouds in the background, it feels like they're throwing off the blankets of winter. Yeah, exactly. That was very well said. So there are times where I have like, maybe I'm going somewhere and I'm a little bit early and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my 15, 20 minutes that I have extra to do. So one thing I like to do is I go on my iPhone and I look at the maps and I look for green spots and I go and I look for green spots near where I am. So this was on my way to Longwood and for the life of me, I could not tell you where this is. So this is a little green spot that I saw on my little iPhone on the map and I just went, oh, let me look over there and see what this is. And it was kind of a foggy morning and I went around the bend and there was this Jurassic Parky looking scene right in front of me. It was just, it was just absolutely incredible. It was just amazing. And, you know, of course I had to stop and this is an iPhone picture. So, you know, sometimes you don't have to have a fancy camera to get something really unique and very different. The key is getting off the beaten track and finding something you never, ever would have expected. And this was one of those things that I squeezed in right before something I was doing and came up with something I totally did not expect. Oh, this golden path is an awesome image. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I always imagine some like dinosaur or something walking through, through in the background or something. I can hear know? the sound so, of yeah. the velociraptors breathing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I mean, this almost looks like it could be in Costa Rica, you know, a tropical forest, but this is up in Pennsylvania. So. You know, um, one thing I do is I spend a lot of time exploring within a two, two hour radius of where I live. So there's some pretty exciting places that can be found um, if you just bother to look. Now the next one is the forest path and I've done a couple of these and I've been very fortunate to be a member of the Mountain Club of Maryland for quite some time now. And I was hiking with them every week. And they took me to some great, amazing parks and trails and places I never would have known existed. The only problem with being with the hiking club though is they are hiking, they are there for the workout. So when I'm walking on something like this, this trail, I am looking at the ground, making sure I don't fall on my face. <laughs> So I never get to actually stop and look at the scenery. So, so I kind of learned when I'm kind of walking down this trail, 
you know, watch the feet. And if I want to stop and look, you know, want to look, I have to stop. Otherwise I will trip and fall. So this is actually, this trail is very accessible. It's at, in the Tapsco Valley State Park, right near Cascade Falls. Um, to the left, there's, um, there's a stream and then there's a little trail up there. And I just went up there and it was just the green. It was one of those May times, May days. It had rained recently. So the, the trees, the leaves on the trees were really verdant and shining. And it was just, you know, just the, I mean, I could just imagine what the roots of this tree can tell about how many feet have passed it by it. Dogs and children and older people and younger people. I mean, the stories this tree could tell for me, I, I thought was very compelling. So that's why I, that's what, I think that's what made me pause for this picture. I love the mossiness and the, the... Yeah. And it is not true. Moss only grows on one side of the tree. That's not true. <laughs> I've tried that. It does not work. Then um, my next one that I chose, I have several different images from the same location and I call this affinity and I have a couple of them. This is really pop. This is also pop's place. This is the same location. And last, last year, last couple of years, we had some really great mornings, really foggy and all that kind of stuff. This year wasn't quite, we didn't have quite as much of that. And, um, so whenever I see some really awesome light and this sunrise was just coming up and I was coming in to feed these two horses and they were great, great friends. They had been together for a very long time. I would say at least 15 years. And so, you know, Pops was the older horse and it would take him forever to eat. So we have this little pen that we would put him in and his best friend would just stand there watching him eat because he would eat much faster than his old friend and um, they were just best of buds. So um, it was, it was pretty, pretty cool. So Pop's place was pretty neat. Affinity is the, the, the kin and, kin, kindness and kinship that they had for each other. So unfortunately we had to say goodbye to Pops last year and now his little friend has a new friend and so it's now the new have a new story of best best buddies in the paddock. So you have done a series on horses, I'm sure, since you have so much. <laughs> and barns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So of course, um, my life is either you know in the woods finding streams or whatnot, or at a horse barn probably schlepping horse poo. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm doing. And then I chose for my last one to highlight is of course reflections. And this, you know, in the winter time, the light in the winter time is spectacular. It's always when you least expect it, when it's 20 degrees out, that's when it's best. And this is one of these random little roads near Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge. And the sun had come up and I turned around and there was little tidal marsh. And this picture just kind of revealed itself to me. And that's what nature does. Because when you slow down and you wait and you start to look at the big things and then the smaller, smaller things, nature reveals itself to you. So you have to kind of be, have an open mind an open eyes and open heart in order to see the beauty that's around you. So what I love about this picture, even to this day, if I have it just on a piece of paper, I cannot tell you which way is up. So I'm like, so I'm flipping it back and forth and I'm not really sure which way it goes. So, um, and, and it, this was one of those fleeting moments where you had this super great puffy clouds up in the sky and the reflection was there. And 10 minutes later, the light was completely different. So it's just a matter of being there at the right place at the right time. So what I, what I wanted to do, and let's make sure I get it turned upright the first way was show you what this would look like framed. Let's see if this will work. So this is what it'll look like framed. Emily, put yourself on the main screen now. Stop sharing. Okay. And you'll be big enough for us to see that. Okay, hold on. Where'd my cursor go? Stop sharing. Okay, does this work? Um, if we go for speaker view, folks. There she is. Speaker view versus gallery view. Okay. All right. So this is a 11 by, do I have it right? 
it's in the right direction. <laughs> um, yes. 11 by 17 print with a half inch border. And there is a mat. And then I have a gallery black frame for this. So this is what they look like when you look at what a framed um, a, fi a final product is. And so what I put this on, it depends on the tones of the image. So I use what is called a Hanna Mule um, paper, art paper, fine art paper. And Hanna Mule is a German company that's been in the paper business for over 500 years. And they have a huge variety of different textures and styles of fine art paper. So I happen to be fortunate to discover a printing company in Texas that hold these um, this fine art papers in on rolls. So I can actually get this produced. I've, I had a 20 by 30 image produced, um, custom produced for this. And it's pretty fantastic stuff. So I usually use, um, like in this case, because of the blue tones, then I use um, photo rag paper by Hannah Mule. If it has more of an orange tone or yellow tones in it, then I tend to use the bamboo paper. And what these both papers do is add texture and depth and tone to the actual image itself. So it's not just a plain like Kodak paper or anything like that. So um, when I produce them, I also make sure, so that's um, archival paper. And then I put an archival plexiglass on the front. So instead of glass, which can easily break, this is pretty pretty durable. And then I do non-glare, as you can see, it, you can see that this one is non-glare. So that really makes a difference. So it helps with any UV light coming in, it protects it from the UV light. So that, that really does make a difference for that. Uh, also with Hannah Mule, I have the ability to go onto their website when I produce anything on their paper and just um, issue an official certificate of authenticity, which will go with each image, um, um, you know, framed image, that, that you will be, if you do purchase it, you would receive. So that's kind of cool about Hannah Mule. Well, you were talking about making it 20 by 30. Is it possible if someone needs something much larger for a space to special order a print in the size they need? Oh, absolutely it is. Um, there is now software where I can um, resize these iPhone pictures to be much larger so I know I can go up to 20 by 20 by 30 or 20, I think that's where I came up with 20 by 30, but I, that wasn't a full resizing. I am able to do that. So, um, so these, if you see something that you like and you kind of want a different size other than what we have published that is available, you'd have to contact Deb directly and she'll work with you, could work with me. And then we can provide you a quote if it's separate from what we have for, for this exhibit. So um, we, I did double check what the deadlines are for Christmas in case anybody's considered, considering purchasing a framed piece. And that's December 10th is the Christmas deadline. And then if you want just the print only without anything done to it, December 17th is the deadline for that. So um, I will order it from Finer Works and then we'll get it shipped up to us and then we'll make sure that it gets into your hands as quickly as possible. Emily, one of the things that I came away with today, uh, well, before I say that, the last show you had, there were some at the church, there were canvas prints as well as various sizes, which was just so dynamic. I loved hanging that show. And every time I've hung <laughs> any of your work, I love hanging it. It just hangs itself. You just pick it up and say, where do you want to be? Oh, That's sweet. <laughs> um, the canvas prints were kind of interesting. Are they available? with this company? Um, oh, absolutely. And I can do canvas prints. I haven't done it with this artwork yet, probably because I don't know why I haven't. I'm afraid maybe the colors won't come up quite right on the canvas, but I'm certainly willing to give it a go. And they're so painterly that putting them on canvas would completely flummox the rest. Yeah, they would look completely different. It's certainly worth giving it a try. I haven't done it. So yeah, it's, it's very easy to do. I'm, I'm Absolutely. curious. You'll have to let yeah. me know if you do that. Yeah. Um, and then that can be with or without a frame also with its canvas prints. Well, I think people may have picked up a little bit of, of what I'm feeling, which is that you have come a long way 
since that 2011 first camera. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, even in the last four years, I pulled some stuff up from four years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. Delete, <laughs> delete, delete. <laughs> so. and, and I just, I'm so impressed with your knowledge and your ability to manipulate the image after you've taken it. And um, I'm afraid to take one of your classes because I don't need another. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but but I, it's awfully tempting. Um, aren't but you? But you know, a lot. A lot of it is um, you still have to know the elements of design and composition and artwork. So if you're an artist, that is critical. So I'm only, the reason why you haven't seen much of this work this year is because the lighting has not been correct. Just, I just don't have, have not had the right lighting in the right situation to, to replicate some of the work that these, this has been created in the last couple of years. So it's not from lack of looking. I have been out and looking, it's just the, the the opportunities haven't shown themselves. So lighting is really important to this. So like some of those, like no man's land, where you just have that one spot of light down buried in there, you know, that was how it was. Um, of course, that's that place, there were snakes everywhere. I swear it felt like an Eden. You did not want to dare step into where all the snakes were. So I thought North Point was bad. This place was a lot worse. So. <laughs> Well, we'll send you out to fed the snakes off and bring us back some great pictures. Okay. Uh, Want to open it up and see if anyone has some questions? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where the chat room went. Does anybody have any questions? I was surprised to see Robert. <laughs> uh, did Dennis move his hand at all? No, I don't think so. Dennis, would you have any questions? He knows how to raise his hand virtually anyway. Uh, actually, all I had was a, a comment, and that is that I recognize those places in the Tachiko Park. That's I, great. I, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there. <laughs> you probably know that tree. You probably almost tripped on it. <laughs> I've been by it a lot of times. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I think that's that's the exciting part of this is you can create something completely unexpected, something that's close by to home, you know? That's, I think that's what's really nice. I mean, you wouldn't think about it living so close to Baltimore and Washington, but we do have a pretty special place here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, I think that effect that you get of the um, Hudson River School is just breathtaking. And I mistake them for paintings every time I see them because of your touch. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I love creating them. I wish I need new, new, new ones, but I just haven't seen anything quite yet that's worth it. I've been seeing some art coming from you. I've seen other images. Other things, other things, but not this series, not this series, so. Um, so if you want to see more from Emily Carter Mitchell, just look her name up on the web. And if you are a photographer and want to learn from Emily, where are you teaching now? And so I am still with Capital Photography Center and they're based in Washington, DC. And um, sorry, I was trying to get to my next slide. And um, I do the nature and wildlife stuff. So everything I do is outside. So we're now in winter time. So if you come with me, you better be dressed warmly. <laughs> With snake boots. With, well, no, no, I don't take people. Oh, those not out <laughs> I, don't, I don't subject people to those. <clears throat> That's, you know, so when I know it's pretty, pretty tough, I don't do it. But um, let's see what else. Um, nature as art dot my portfolio dot com. I was trying to get the slide up. It wouldn't come up. Is my artist website. And then that'll link to my, um, my smug mug site, which has all my images. But I'm really active on Facebook. So if you want to, you know, follow me or that kind of thing, just find me on Facebook. Emily, I want to thank you for spending the time and being my uh, brave first Zoom meet the artist. <laughs> thank you. First time for me too. I think it goes a little deeper this way. I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah. As long as we figure out the glitches. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the food fest, but it's it's actually an artist talk. <laughs> yes, an artist talk. You have to bring your own food for these things. 
<laughs> or with Art Wolf, he does Tequila Tuesday. So he always has, he's always drinking tequila. <laughs> <laughs> we have Malbec Fridays with the tango group. And there we go. <laughs> sometimes the um, discussion of that particular um, tango orchestra kind of devolves into silliness. I'm sure. Well, I want to thank everybody, Dennis, Susan, Liz, Robert, thank, and Deb, especially. I want to thank Deb so much for this opportunity. And it was, it's been great. So this has been a lot of fun putting this together. It's always a great experience. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for coming.